in. The ship's coming in. Hey, Nipper, where's everybody going? Why, there's your ship coming in. The mermaid is just tying up. Come on, let's go. Just go there. <laughs> hey, how old oh, never seen this before, eh? Hey. <laughs> no sign of me, old lady. I guess I'm in luck. It's been. Looks like all the lasses in London have come down to meet us. Don't keep them waiting. I'll pipe you ashore, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you say to stand where you are. You are Captain Bart Paxton? I am. Bart Paxton, Master of the Mermaid, commissioned privateer by order issued under the authority of His Gracious Majesty Charles II. Your ship is declared quarantined. No officer or member of the crew may leave ship under the fullest penalty of naval law. Except you, sir. Have the goodness to accompany me. Have I any choice? No, sir. A carriage is waiting for you on the dock. After three years on a scurvy deck, they'll not keep me out of London to neck. Me neither. I'll nip a herring in gin lane or know the reason why. I'll jump ship. Go over the side and you part company with me. I'm pledged to obey Admiral the orders. But, Captain, we've been six months without sight of a female. If I can't pipe us ashore, we'll pipe them aboard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there, Kipper. You're a bit young for that party. I think you'd best go with me. What you, sir? I don't know. That seems to be the Redcoat secret. You want me, Captain? No. Nope. The boy's going with me. I need an escort to a dingy rum house. A certain gentleman acquaintance of yours is waiting for you inside, Captain. Right this way, please. You'd better stay here, Kipper. Aye, aye, Captain. In here, sir. Sir Francis Crawford. Oh, Bart, you young scoundrel. Sorry to use these cloak and dagger tactics to get you here, but uh, what I have to tell you is not exactly official admiralty business. Thought you were still royal governor in Madras. <laughs> I'm dry docked at the admiralty now. Sit down, Bart, sit down. Glass of sherry. Bart, I have an assignment for you in the West Indies. It's going to make what we did in Madras look like child's play. <laughs> Oh, we scuttled a few galleons together, didn't we? Ah, there's no more adventures since we made the peace with Spain. The armistice has changed England's problems a bit, but it hasn't ended them. You've heard of Henry Morgan. That blood-soaked pirate. Surely you wouldn't be asking me to serve with him. No. Destroy him. Morgan's returned to his old trade, buccaneering. I want you to root him out of Tortuga, wipe his fleet from the seas. It might be done, if I could muster some of my old officers who served with me when I was Royal Navy. Gentlemen officers? <laughs> Pirates don't fight like English gentlemen. There are no rules of war in Morgan's book. The three gentlemen I'm thinking of could sink the devil. Then get them. I've already ordered your ship to be refitted. Kipper, 
Do you think you can find these addresses for me? With my eyes closed, sir. Punishes petty thievery. Who's a thief? I am an actress. With uh, two very visible assets, I'd say. That's my ship. You'll be safe enough now. Oh, one piece of advice, though. If you hope to continue with your, your acting career, you're going to have to learn to keep your hands in your own purse. I'll do without your advice, sailor. And never fear. The gypsy told me I ain't going to enter no gallows, be whipped to no stocks, or be shipped to no colonies. Because I'm smart, that's what. Hey, my name is Mac. What's yours? Nice meeting you. Goodbye. <laughs> the three gentlemen are waiting in the wardroom, Captain Bart. Good lad. <laughs> Kipper, tell Bonnet to start clearing the deck. This halt's beginning to smell like gin lane. All right, Captain. Let's have another drink. Hello, Juan. like an admiral's gig. <laughs> Would never have known you. Any lady got her grappling hooks into you yet, Reginald? Oh, I can still outsail the best of them, Bart. <laughs> well, look, never mind about us, Bart. What brought you home so quick? I have a need for your talents. I have a cruise in mind that'll take the stench of the land out of your lungs. That is, if you uh, still have the stomach for adventure.
boudoir. But, uh, however, oh, oh, please, Captain, how can you take such liberties? But, however, It makes no sense. Only last year, the Crown was lavishing honors on Henry Morgan. Yes. Gave the cutthroat a knighthood and the governor's palace. A year ago, we were at war with Spain. England had no fleet in the Americas. The Spaniards did. We could have lost that war 3,000 miles from home. Morgan was our only naval strength in the Caribbean. Ah, so, uh, so we had to pay his price. Now he's more powerful than ever. Only one out of every ten of our own ships manages to escape him in those waters. Shoot. Nine out of ten. That's a pretty fat hole for Morgan. Sailor can't see me now. <laughs> Our crown colony of Jamaica is starving. Not one ship has gotten through in months. Morgan's men patrol those waters like a pack of hungry sharks, devouring everything. And he's turned the island of Tortuga into a buccaneer kingdom. This Tortuga, is it too strong for a British fleet to crack open? If the Royal Navy were to attack Tortuga, Britain would be plunged back into war with Spain. Well, um, just exactly what does Sir Francis expect us to do? Acting on our own, Unofficially, as privateers. We can provision Jamaica and then smash Morgan. One old ship and half a hundred men to conquer a pirate kingdom? That from the best gunnery officer in the Royal Navy. We fought odds almost as great before, and the mermaid's being fitted with new cannon and all the powder she can hold. Well... It's impossible, of course, for anybody but us. <laughs> what happens if we get caught? If we get caught, the Admiralty won't be able to pull our chestnuts out of the fire this time. And if we succeed? There will be no reward too great. I have that on the word of Sir Francis Crawford himself. Any more questions? When do we up anchor, Captain? We sail with the tide. Oh, Captain, you startle me. But, however... Get out of my bed. On your feet and fast. Don't you talk to me like that! That ain't the way to get on my good side. Who invited you into my cabin? I invited myself. That butcher was waiting on the dock. You wouldn't want me chopped into a sausage, would you? <laughs> it might be an improvement. What's the matter with you? Ain't I sweat enough for you that you've got a good look? I am what I am, and I'm proud of it. There is duchesses that's got no more than me. So I've seen had less. Put me in silk. Give me a little jewelry. You couldn't tell me from a fine lady. Well, can I cut your tongue? 
Could you tell me from a lady? It uh, takes more than silks to make a lady. <laughs> What's a lady got I ain't got? Something, something in her manner that makes a man take off his hat. All the silks of cafe on you, and you'd still be what you are. Carmen? Let's say, untaught. Listen, you blowfish. I'll see the day you drop your hat to me, that's what. Anything is possible. In the meantime, here's half a crown. Take it. And you grubby smelt, you fancy barnacle field rat! You have a pretty salty vocabulary for a street duchess. I rather like you in a rage. Oh, yes? Then you are going to fall in love with me. <laughs> if she doesn't leave soon, drop her over the side. Aye, aye, sir. But uh, take care. The lady has claws. Aye, sir. Rushing me up with a half a crown. Half a crown. Come and says he. Maybe a king. Lieutenant. We'll dispense with naval rank this cruise, Bonnet. Aye, sir. Train bolts number three, they're too loose. Bella, your slow match is too short. You'll blow your head off. Percy. Look a sight more seaworthy than the London dancing master who signed on. A whiff of salt and I grew back my fins, Bart. Can you lend me another powder monkey? Kipper. Aye, aye, sir. Lend a hand. Aye, sir. I say, is somebody boarding the ship? Pee Wee, getting some pointers to the crew. <laughs> Very good. Right now, gentlemen, enough of the finesse. Now, I can't tell you how to use one of these things. You all know that, otherwise you wouldn't be on this ship. But I can tell you that the gentlemen that we're going to meet with in the course of the next few days have no set of rules when it comes to deck fighting. So when there are no rules, you make up your own. And here are one or two that may be useful to you. We'll try you. Now, wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Now, now, just relax. Take it easy, huh? Now, hold that. Now, that is 
lesson number one. Never trust anybody. Now, give me the pig sticker. And that is lesson number two. Never turn your back on anybody. Remember, men, the next time won't be practice. So lively does it. Range 200. On the up wave. told you to drop her off at the dock. There was no sign of the lass in your cabin afore we shoved off. I had no wish to sail on your rotten boat, but that butcher was swimming on the dock to slice my gizzard. What are you doing in that dress? I didn't steal it. Just wanted you to see I could look like a lady. Well, personal cargo, bud? Stow away! Of course, you could uh, put her over the side in a longboat. She might drown. Or worse. She might not. I drop you over the side, but you'd only poison the fish. I don't mind a short sea voyage. You've got one. Three months. Three months? Just where do you filthy sloth think you're taking me? You're on your way to the colonies, my girl. The colonies? You'll take your meals with us. You'll sleep. There's a sail locker under the wheel deck. It's yours till we put you ashore in Jamaica. What do you expect me to do in Jamaica? Use those brains you're so proud of. And you'll stand a better chance of avoiding the hangman's rope if you'll stop trying to look like a lady. Oh, you dirty kid, never out. Your quarters. Stay in them. With pleasure. And just see that you and your other bill trap stay out. One other thing. Wash your face, lady. <laughs> Go ahead and love you, pretty Aiden. <laughs> a trim looking bit of goods. Yes. And the longer we were at sea, the trimmer she's going to look. To me. The man that opens that door gets himself a keg of trouble. You must admit, Bart, that little trouble has a well-turned ankle. The starboard cannon have a well-turned barrel, gunnery officer Percy. I wonder if she'd like to learn the minuet. Bob's gonna do that every time I get up. It's customary. When a lady rises, sit down, gentlemen. A bit of a chicken, my little dove.
sweet child. A lady, when she drinks, holds her glass so, with a little pinky raised. You're wasting your time, Mr. Gunnery Officer. I think she's doing rather well. Him? He wouldn't know a lady if she up and bit him. Ladies don't bite. This one does. And you've got the marks to prove it. Shillings, you cannot beat that, lass. I've never seen such luck. It was a rather fantastic luck for a ruddy fact. Which I'll put an end to. Back to your quarters, man. A lady doesn't crawl around on the decks dicing with a crew. Why, you flabbermouth slob? I want honors. Really, I did. Neither does a lady go around calling people blabbermouth slobs, stinking squids, or blasted swabs. One of the crew said, you was a king. Are you? In my land, I was a king. With 20,000 warriors at my command. Then tell me, what makes a girl a lady? You know, what they top their hats to. I'm not sure I'm the right king to answer that question. Ain't kings and ladies the same wherever you find them? That may be true. Well, I've been improving my manners some. Manners are what you wear on the outside, like clothes. But thinking of other people before yourself, trying to help them, that comes from the inside. Yeah. And what will they be doing to you while you're trying to help them? Do unto others. You give me the fan. I'll show you. Now, first of all, when a lady wants to attract a gentleman's attention, she must flip the fan so, and then walk so. <laughs> flutter the fan, and then flutter the eyelids so. See? Now you try it, huh? <coughs> That's, uh, no, no, wait a minute. Look, you haven't got it right. Uh, just um, get the... Uh, Round this way a bit. <laughs> That's it. Now we uh, put the fan there. So now um, flatter it. There you go. So see you learn so quick, don't you? 
I appreciate all you're trying to learn me. But do you have to wrestle while you show me? Trade that fan in for a musket, Pee-wee. You're in charge of target practice. Now! We shall continue the lesson on the after deck tonight. Now, my little dove. We left off our last lesson with the more intimate steps of the minuet. Come along, child. The minuet? Like fish goes with chips, sweet child. The blending of our inner souls. Inner souls, my God! Lieutenant! There are some nine pounders on the gun deck that are more in need of your attention than this baggage. No need to be so rough on the girl part. I'm running a fighting ship, not a finishing school. All right, sir. See you on the after deck tonight, Pigeon. Okay. When I told you to stay away from my crew, that meant my officers as well. Your jealousy is showing, Captain. <laughs> it's more like it. You haven't changed. I ain't a lady yet, but I'm learning. Just what have you learned so far? That there is other people in the world to think of beside myself. But it's supposed to work both ways. Everybody on this ship has tried to help me but you. You ain't learned me nothing. I haven't taught you anything. That's what I said. Taught you, not learned you. Taught me? And you'll find a clean change of linen in my sea chest. Thanks, Bart. Someone left him to sing to the powder and shot. Moonlight inspection, eh? Yeah. And what's the wine for? Priming the cannon? <laughs> well, that does it. <laughs> Gentlemen, seeing the young lady has been untrue to us all. Shall we drown our tears together? Hey. Right. Trader. Seen a lot of them when I was combing the Mediterranean with Morgan. 
Oh, and cranky, by the looks of it, staring like a mud turtle. <laughs> Take a look at what she's got for a captain. Plain to see he's no Siamese fighting fish. They wouldn't be this far from home if they weren't loaded to the gunnels with a rich cargo. We're lighting a load. Cut out the sails! Hoist up the Jolly Roger! We'll scare the juice out of them! <laughs> your promenade. Stop! No, you I'm don't. not, Barge. Don't you dare. Barracuda, Sir Henry Morgan's flotilla. Don't you wait. Surrender Daniel. your ship or we'll stop you. Yeah. Please, have mercy, sir, please. I mean, I'm, I'm just pee with <laughs> you. I'm all through. You know, just a, and a, and a, a very peaceful man. <laughs> and, and not in the least. <laughs> this jellyfish looks soft enough to eat. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, uh, look, look, we have a very rich cargo. Silks and spices and, <laughs> and, and spices and things and, and you, you know perhaps we could make a bargain. Bargain? <laughs> what time? It's late. <laughs> <laughs>
thought they'd cannon over the side part. Hated to see them go, but we've no space on our decks. Have a mind to cut off your ears as a present for Henry Morgan, but that's a privilege he may be wanting for himself. Get back aboard your ship. You gonna sink us with all hands? No. Send you back to Tortuga. You have enough canvas left if you don't run into weather, and enough food and water so you don't starve or choke. Why are you being so generous? Take a message to Morgan. The king of the ocean sends his compliments to the king of Tortuga. Tell him I'm selling my cargo and yours in the market at Jamaica for a fancy price. Then I'll be back for another load. Bonnet, pipe the barracuda aboard his ship. That'll twist Morgan's tail for him, eh, Bart? Luck played with us. But it'll take a lot more than a masquerade to smash Morgan. All right, man, let's clear these sticks. Looks like a thieves' market. All right, I'll do it. Hey, this is my food right now. Considered of you, Captain. Just because I've become a lady don't mean I'm so delicate you have to lock me up every time you hold target practice. These men weren't wounded in practice. Morgan's ships. You were protecting me. If you'd stop preening yourself long enough so you could see further than your own reflection in a glass, maybe you'd make yourself useful for a change. I didn't grow up in the streets without learning how to patch a busted noggin. That is, if you don't mind my lending a hand. I'd be grateful for the help of a real lady. the ship below right enough, sneaking home with her tail between her legs. The barracuda's gonna have some mighty tall explaining to do to Morgan, I'm thinking. Ha <laughs> 
The Ogeron report, someone's drawn the Barracuda's teeth. A milk sup merchantman, the mermaid. We boarded her and walked into a trap. Aye, that it was, Sir Henry. As bloodthirsty a crew as any in the Brotherhood. They was in high yelling and jumped us. Cut us down before we had a chance. And yet left you alive to come slinking back here to Tortuga with your tails between your legs. Aye, with a message from the captain of the mermaid. King of the ocean, he calls himself. He said to tell you that he'd take the booty he filched off us and sell it at the marketplace in Jamaica. And then he'd come back again for another cargo. We're gonna let this king of the ocean do this to us, my love. You blasted idiot. I have a mind to sling you up from your own yard arm for letting this mountebank slip through my blockade. King of the ocean, eh? Well, we'll soon see how long he keeps his crown. Could be one of Morgan's ships. Ah, her flag is British. A British ship, fat with cargo by the looks of her. How did she slip through the blockade? Make fast forward. Here, Ed, catch this line. Three lines out. Wing moves to cargo hatches. Stand by to take a line there. Make fast mooring lines. Four left. Well, Jamaica seems mighty pleased to see us, Bart. They'd be a lot happier when they see the supplies we've got in our hold for them. Make that forward line a little tighter. Percy, I'd better get those bills of lading ashore before these good citizens attack us. since you keep it so special. It's worth more than money. It's my mother's. Morgan's men overlooked it when they boarded the ship she was sailing on. Did, did your mother escape, Bart? My mother was still a beautiful woman. Morgan carried her to Tortuga. She died there. It cut steep. Done it. I think it won't be long before I settle accounts with Henry Morgan. The merchants are getting impatient, Bart. Coming. You can uh, keep that finery you're wearing. Oh, I, I couldn't, really. But however. Sail clear of butchers armed with cleavers. With love to Lady Margaret. I'm thinking you'll be coming after me. 
Captain Bard. Say, who's captain of this ship? I am. My name's Randolph. Buy and sell everything. Biggest merchant in the colony. Stevens here. Taylor. Did you bring any cloth? Judson Shoemaker. I need leather badly. Hawkins here. I'm a baker. Did you bring any flour? You'll all get a chance to bid on our cargo as soon as it's cleared customs. Oh, I'll handle that for you. Buy your whole cargo at your price and take care of customs out of my own pocket. Out of our pocket, you mean, when we have to come to you to buy it. Captain, give us a chance to bid. Yes, give us a chance to bid, Captain. You'll find Jamaica near starvation, thanks to our governor here. Is this your ship, sir? The mermaid out of London, Captain Paxton. Percival Smythe Jones, my mate. At your service, sir. And I'm Sir Thomas Motorford, royal governor of Jamaica. Captain. Yours is the first ship to make its way through Morgan's blockade in months. Our own merchants refuse to send their ships out of this harbor. To lose them to the pirates? They'll rest safer in port, thank you. The pirates gave you no trouble, sir. None we weren't prepared for. It appears you came through without a scratch. <laughs> a few bites, but Mon Bar's the Barracuda came off the worst for it. Captain Paxton here had more luck than your flotilla, Sir Thomas. Morgan's ships jumped my fleet before the wind had caught the sails. They have an efficient spy system here in Jamaica. I thought it was England's policy to keep hands off Tortuga. Paper policy may do for London, sir. But it is not mine to cringe under piracy without striking a blow. Oh, let's get down to business. You'll just give me your bills of lading, Captain. Sir Thomas, as a merchant, I must turn a profit. But I'll not trade on human misery. I'll be grateful if you'd accept the responsibility for seeing to it that my cargo is distributed at a fair price. Gladly, but... Well, it seems the quickest way to get it to those who need it the most. I promise you speed and fair dealing, sir. And I promise you're a fool, Captain. As soon as we've dropped cargo, we'll set sail and try and get another shipload through to you. You are a brave man, Captain Paxton. Generous and brave. I hope my luck holds. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Gentlemen. Your help will be appreciated to set a fair value on Captain Paxton's merchandise. That we will, sir. We will, sir. I shall clear this with the customs inspector at once. Sir Thomas, excepting for one flaw, you'd be a first-class governor. You trust people. Has it crossed your mind this man Paxton may be one of Morgan's men? Does it seem reasonable that one of Morgan's spies would go to that length to gain our confidence? Highly reasonable. When only one ship in almost a year has gotten past Morgan's blockade, and her captain can hardly wait to put back to sea, I, for one, would like to know something more about him before I give him my full trust. Good day, Sir Thomas. Meg! Hey, you're leaving us. The captain is still here. But what are you going to do in Jamaica? I might do to end of my career in the theater. Here. Here's a sovereign. Just to help tide you over. And here's another. A lady should have money in her purse. Thank you, sir. Welcome to Jamaica, my lady. Can we be of any service? Well, I'd like to find an inn. To be sure, to be sure. Johnson, fetch a carriage. Follow me, my lady. We shall start the distribution of these goods first thing in the morning.
help me get this lady to the carriage. The doctor said she'd be unconscious for several hours yet. There's no need for you to remain, Thomas. I'll stay with her. Thank you, Phoebe. I wonder who she can be. Patience, Thomas. The girl will tell us soon enough. I've seen more cheerful faces dangling from a gallows. It's just that, well, something's missing. Yeah. Little Meg. I don't know, the ship seems sort of empty without her. Quieter, too. It was a cruel thing, Bart, to set a poor defenseless creature adrift in a strange port. You worry about Meg. She can take care of herself. Let go of me! Let go of me! She's turning oh. round. Poor little thing. Miss. 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 Lady Margaret. Poor Fred. He hit me. He... It's all right, Lady Margaret. Try not to think of it, Lady Margaret. You're safe here with us. I'm Thomas Modiford, governor of Jamaica. And this is my cousin's widow, Phoebe Weldon. You've been unconscious, my dear, but the doctor says you'll be fine after a rest. How did I get here? Later. You still have some recovering to do. Try to sleep. Phoebe will stay with you. You're very kind. And you are very lovely. nothing of the arrival of the Lady Margaret. I'm sure there's a very simple explanation. Her confusion is quite natural, Phoebe. The doctor said she might suffer a loss of memory. The doctor ordered rest, Lady Margaret. I'm Lady Margaret. Yes, so you've told us. What a beautiful necklace. An heirloom. Yes, it belonged to my mother. Customs must have changed in London. When I left, backgammon was all the rage. I win again. That's 14 pounds you owe me, Sir Thomas. <laughs> Our doctor hopes that as the effects of the blow clear up, you will remember everything. But I don't want to. I don't want to remember anything that happened before I came here. I'm glad. It's your turn to shake the tie, Sir Thomas. But, however,
ever. Uh, perhaps you'd rather like to take a stroll in the garden? King of the ocean. Run up the signals! Weren't for Morgan's orders, I'd throw a broadside into his hull. But if he doesn't answer our signals, let's blow him apart. Signaling us to follow him, Bart. Could be a trap. Follow him, Mr. Gunnery Officer. Follow him and we'll find out. But keep your powder dry. Morgan, he's got a royal visitor. Drink with them, joke with them, but above all, keep your wits about you and a sharp eye open. When we leave Tortuga, this map will have to show fortifications, number and position of cannon, powder magazines, arsenals, best landing places and routes of approach. Everything that we'll need to know for an invasion. And we have to carry it all in our heads. It's rather a large order, Bart. Not if we split memory four ways. Peewee, take the fortifications. Percy, the gun positions. Powder magazines and arsenals, Reggie. I'll take the landing places and routes of approach. Good luck, gentlemen. And remember, in Tortuga, we are not gentlemen. Of the ocean, eh? Have we met before? Did you ever ship under me? Ship under you? <laughs> <laughs> well, not unless you're the King of England. I served him for a while, then I went back to serving myself. <laughs> if I were King of England, you wouldn't serve me. You'd be my partner. Well, your partner? Think me if I don't admire your gall. This way, your majesty. After you, your majesty. This is the captain of the Zyder Z. He claims the Dutch governor of Curacao will pay his ransom. Well, for your sake, I hope you're right. Well, it's either ransom or the rope. Sir Henry is so soft-hearted with sailors. We have no market here for white slaves. Or for our plundered cargoes, either. But there is a rich market. And only I hold the key. Stay. Now, Paxton, you've been my guest for a while, and we've done our best to treat you royally. True? That you have. You've entertained us like visiting sultans. I didn't come here on a pleasure cruise. No, I didn't think you had. Otherwise, my forts would have sunk you in the harbor. When you looted the Barracuda ship, you hurt my purse. Not to mention my... Pride. Bring Sir Henry a little balm for his pride. What did you send him for? Sir Henry, 
I don't think you trust me. Oh, like my own right hand. Here's your tally book, Captain. You'll put that pistol down a minute. Take a look at that. On him, you knuckle brain. See from Captain Montbars. One gold ring with ruby, 90 pounds. 27 bolt silk cloth at 22 shillings. A hundred hogs head of fine canary. By the devil's teeth, what's this? Bookkeeping. A complete list of everything I received from you and what it brought in Jamaica. Minus a small percentage for my trouble, of course. And here is your half share of the partnership, Your Majesty. Good coin of the realm. Care to count it? <laughs> With what we've got sold it away here in Tortuga, we can keep you busy for the next ten years. Partner! <laughs> <laughs> That's the last load. Our holds are bulging. And so will be my coppers when you return, partner. No chance you'd be forgetting to do that, would there now? What? Lose another rich cargo? No, Morgan. I value our partnership too highly for that. Get those longboats back to the ship. How about me making the run to Kingston? You never take me any place. What do you mean? Didn't I take you to the siege of Panama? And keep your eyes off Captain Baxter. That's my <laughs> Four uh, six foot walls about here. Arsenal and powder magazine here. And here. Two batteries of nine pounders. Gentlemen, that completes a very pretty picture. Now all we need is an army and a fleet. Let's hope we can convince Sir Thomas to supply both. Tonight I must insist upon pleasure before business, Captain. The Lady Margaret is the most refreshingly charming woman in the world, isn't she, Phoebe? So you've said at least ten times, Sir Thomas. And that's the way a man in love should feel, I judge. Judge for yourself, my friend. Each hour increases your beauty, Lady Margaret. Captain Paxton, the Lady Margaret, my bride-to-be. You said I'd be charmed. I'm staggered. She is kind enough to pretend to enjoy our simple colonial life after London society. You look as though you've met the Lady Margaret before, Captain. Indeed, I have. The lady was a passenger aboard my ship. Splendid. Then you can clear up the mystery still clouding Lady Margaret's mind. She received a blow on the head from a dock ruffian and cannot remember her last name. Her name is Darcy, Lady Margaret Darcy. Oh, Darcy, it all comes back to me now. Oh, thank you, Captain. You're a lifesaver. Always glad to help a lady. I cannot tell you how she has brightened this gloomy palace. And I am enchanted with the new London expressions, so colorful. Rather astonishing, I'd say. Isn't it time for dinner, Thomas? 
I'm sure Captain Baxter would rather eat than chatter. After dinner, I promise to desert the ladies and give business my full attention. I'll assemble the Colonial Council here tomorrow afternoon. I hope they're as ready for the fight as you are, sir. Your map should put some fire under them. Decided. Lady Margaret. I didn't steal it. I only took it so it'd come after me. Yet you used it to deceive a gentleman. You don't really intend to marry Sir Thomas. Why not? No one else has asked me. He's a fine man, Meg. And... Meg is gone forever. Don't you understand it? I've changed. Have you? Lay off. Of your swap, not your ship. <sighs> now ask yourself if it's a Thomas you love. Hey, you forgot your necklace. It's my belief, gentlemen, that this map will be the means to destroy Morgan's stronghold. But I'd be less than honest if I didn't point out that the cost may be high in men and in money. Uh, one question, Sir Thomas, before we risk either. How was Captain Paxton here, able to map Tortuga, when none of us have been able to get within sight of it? Can it be that he's secretly on good terms with Morgan? I remind you, sir, Captain Paxton is a guest under my roof. And what better place for a Morgan spy to hide than under your roof? We know nothing of this man, nor where he got his rich cargo. It seems to me that it's quite possible he leads us into a trap. Your point would be well taken, Mr. Randolph, with one exception. I hear the captain has already served the crown as a privateer. I say scratch a privateer and you'll find a pirate. Piracy is a serious charge, Mr. Randolph. Are you prepared to back it up? Piracy is no private matter, Randolph. If Captain Paxton is charged with piracy, I will bring him to trial. And if he or any other man is found guilty, I will hang him. Are you prepared to make a formal charge? Uh, no, not at this time. It would seem to me that if we are to trust Captain Paxton, we must also trust his plan. And since there is no one here with a better one to offer, I suggest we back it with force. What force? The militia can't be used without breaking the treaty with Spain. True enough. But volunteers can go. Give me 300 men and the ships to carry them, and I promise you I'll smash Morgan's stronghold. I'll get you volunteers to fight Morgan. And Mr. Randolph will supply the ships by requisition from the King's Crown, ready to sail for Tortuga tomorrow morning at sunrise. I still don't like the sound of it, but I'll do my part, gentlemen. Lady Margaret, you're keeping Sir Thomas waiting. Thank you, Phoebe. Shove off. Bart. 
We're all ready, Cap. Signal all the ships of the flotilla. We sail at once. Margaret, what's the meaning of this? I knew your little game of playing lady would start to wear thin. Don Lady's dance in Jamaica? Not barefoot. Your masquerade fool Sir Thomas, but not me. I suppose you are going to tell him the minute he dogs. That may not be necessary. The flotilla won't return for at least three weeks, which should give you plenty of time to pack your things and be gone. Ha! Huh. You love him yourself. That's how the wind blows, don't it? If I thought you were really in love with Thomas, I wouldn't raise a finger to stop the marriage. But I saw how you looked at that long-legged sea captain. Margaret, I know where your heart lies. You'll be happier if you follow it. I was getting fed up playing the lady anyway. Don't worry. I know when the cakes run dry. He's all yours, my lady. Margaret, if there's ever anything you need. Stay just out of range of the harbor cannon. The rest of the force will land here, on the windward side of the island. Open fire at dawn to cover the landing. Right. Broadside's at dawn. What about this wall? Won't they sight us? I don't think so. Anyway, the trees on that part of the island are thick enough to 
cover the landing party until you're practically under the wall. And might I ask what you will be doing all this time, Captain? Blowing up the powder magazine. The explosion will be your signal to attack. Won't you need any men with you? My chances will be better alone. We'll swing the cannons tonight, Bonnet. Aye, aye, sir. Swing tonight. And Tiny, make sure that all the crew are in the first wave, will you? Aye, aye, sir. Gamble, see that the cutlass men stay with me. Aye, aye, sir. And my volunteers will cover the landing party. Just as I told you, Sir Henry, your self-styled King of the Ocean has brought all his friends. Let them land. seen us. There's no sign of a man on the wall. Don't like this waiting like sitting ducks. Sir Thomas, every moment we sit here lessens our chance of a surprise attack. I say move now. Friend of yours just arrived, Captain Morgan. Only he used the back door. All alone and heading for the arsenal. Have you got <laughs> life or dead? Well, Mr. Randolph here owes him several favors, I'm thinking. Take him alive. He deserves special attention. Very good, sir. You too. Very well. Signal to the attack.
Mrs. Paxton. Surprise. The traitor has let us square into Morgan's trap. I wish to God I could say you were wrong. Two gallows. Not very economical. Seeing they'll only be using one. I'll grant you one virtue, Morgan. You've no fear of the rope. <laughs> I'll never end on that gallows. Influence. That's what I've got. In our places in this Tubney governor's palace. The Crown still owes me a few favors for services rendered at Portobello and Panama. And I've even the counts with you. By damning me at the trial. By denying Randolph was in your pay. <laughs> well, I have the devil's luck, you see. I'll cheat the hangman yet. Take more than the devil, Morgan. It would take an angel to get either of us out of here. <laughs> I was told you had left the island. Not the island. Only the governor's palace. But it's all for the best. Lady Margaret, Meg. Don't say it. I wasn't cut out to be a governor's lady. Or any kind of lady, I guess. The only real thing about me is this crest. And it wasn't my mother who wore it. Why have you come back to tell me this? It wasn't easy. You are the only man who ever thought of me as a lady. 
I'd like to have left you with that. But my cradle was a hundred gutters. This crest belonged to Bart Paxton's mother, who was killed by Morgan. So you see, Bart had more reason to fight them than to join them. Perhaps Major Fielding's voice was so loud at the trial that it drowned out the truth and my own better judgment. I'll review the evidence at once. I'll be going. You're in love with Captain Paxton, aren't you? Perhaps. But Meg, where will you go? How will you live? I'm an actress. I'll get along. Please, give this back to Captain Paxton. Goodbye, Sir Thomas. Jamaica will be losing a fine lady. At your suggestion, I had Major Fielding search Randolph's house. Where I found definite proof he was in Morgan's pay. My judgment of you was too hasty, Captain. My neck thanks you for reconsidering, Major. But, Sir Thomas, how did you find out about my mother? From a lady who asked me to return this. Stop me! Stop me! Stop me! Stop me! Let me go, you swear! I warned you to sail clear of butchers and meat cleavers. Why? My lady. 